What you learn from history is the market goes down. It goes down a lot. The math is simple. There's been 93 years a century. This is easy to do. The market's had 50 declines of 10% or more. So 50 declines in 93 years. About once every two years, the market falls 10%. We call that a correction. That means that's a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly. But we, you know, we call it a correction. And uh, uh, so 50 declines in 93 years. About once every two years, the market falls 10%. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. That's known as a bear market. We've had 15 declines in 93 years. So every six years, the market's going to have a 25% decline. That's all you need to know. You need to know the market's going to go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to 6, that's great. You understand the company, you look at the balance sheet, and they're doing fine. And you're hoping to get to 22 with it. 14 to 22 is terrific. 6 to 22 is exceptional. So you take advantage of these declines. They're going to happen. No one knows when they're going to happen. So that there is Peter Lynch. He ran the Magellan Fund at Fidelity for 13 years and turned 18 million into 14 billion at an average annual return of 29.2%. And many people think of Lynch as this stock market big brain genius, but the more you look into him, the more you realize that his success came from a mastery of the long-term investing temperament. And when it comes to investing during a period of extreme volatility, such as a market crash, it's this investing temperament that largely decides whether you succeed or fail. So in this video, I'm going to take you through some clips from this 1994 lecture by Peter Lynch, and we'll hear firsthand the mental tips and tricks he used to profit from big market crashes. This video is brought to you by ShareSite. Sick of tracking your performance manually? Track capital gains, dividends, and currency fluctuations easily, and when it comes to tax time, have everything you need ready to go with just a click of a button. Try ShareSite for free, or use the referral link in the description to get four months free when you sign up to an annual plan. Now, as sad as it is, most investors usually do pretty terribly when they're hit with a market crash. Uh, there's shocking news headlines, you know, fear is everywhere and people tend to make very silly decisions. So as Peter Lynch will now explain, the first step in profiting from a stock market crash is to just know that a crash will come. You know, it's inevitable. Your portfolio will be hit and it's only a matter of time and no one can predict it. People get too carried away. And first of all, they try and predict the stock market. That is a total waste of time. No one can predict the stock market. But I'm trying to tell you it'd be very useful to know what the stock market is going to do. It'd be terrific to know that the Dow Jones average year from now would be X, that we're going to have a full-scale recession, or interest rates going to be 12%. That's useful stuff. You never know it, though. You just don't get to learn it. So I've always said if you spend 14 minutes a year on economics, you've wasted 12 minutes. And I, I, I really believe that. So don't think you're going to be able to see the crash coming, but understand that it will happen. It will catch you out of the blue at some point in your investing career. So if you're going to be a holder of common stock, the first step in profiting from a crash is to be at peace with the idea that you're going to cop one and no one can see it coming. And if you are at peace with that idea, then you can start to understand ways to profit from this inevitable event occurring. And the key organ in your body in the stock market is your stomach. It's not the brain. If you can add 8 and 8 and get reasonably close to 16, that's the only level of math you need to know. All you have to know is you're going to see it. It's always going to be scary. There's going to be always something to worry about. And you just have to forget all about it. Cut it all out and own good companies or own turnarounds. Study them and you'll do well. And that's all there is and I've, I'm ready for questions. So when it comes to making money from a market crash, it's really all about your stomach. You really don't have to be a genius. You know, the mathematical side of things is actually quite easy, but it's the temperamental side of investing that's very tough. And that's why most people lose money when the market crashes, even though it's actually raining gold. So at this point, we understand that, you know, these crashes will happen. We won't see it coming. And it's fear and panic that usually lead us to doing dumb things that cause permanent loss of capital. So 
Now let's turn our attention to some of the things we need to do to be able to profit from a market crash. And the first step, as Peter Lynch would say, is you need to know what you own. I made money in Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I can understand it. I, uh, when there was recessions, I didn't have to worry about what was happening. I could go there and people were still there. I didn't have to worry about low priced Korean imports. I mean, I just didn't have, you know, I can understand it. And you laugh, I made 10 or 15 times my money in Dunkin' Donuts. Those are the kind of stocks I can understand. You shouldn't be calling your broker four times a day to get stock quotes. It doesn't work. Getting up in the morning to look to see how your stock did yesterday is not useful. You should be looking at the company when you get the quarterly reports. You should be, if you're at the mall, imagine if you were in the, re if you're in the retailing industry or if you're in the restaurant industry, you would have seen Taco Bell, you would have seen McDonald's, you would have seen Toys R Us. I mean, you would have seen all these companies do terrifically well. You would have seen Bombay, you would have seen Tandy with Radio Shack. And you would have seen Radio Shack roll across the country and pretty soon there were you know, 25 Radio Shacks in every major city and you said, there's not much room for them to go. But they had a 20 year great run. You, that's what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with the minutia of today. You're dealing, what's this company doing two years, three years, four years, five years from now? So Peter Lynch touches on two key points that honestly will get you through any market crash very, very well. The first point is to understand what you're holding in your portfolio. You know, if you really do understand what you've bought, your fear and anxiety will be vastly reduced when the stock is plummeting because you know you're holding a great business. You know, you know that that business is rock solid. It has no debt, for example, it has great profit margins. It has a huge competitive advantage. And you went in and you did the calculations and you worked out that you bought it well below its intrinsic value. You know, if you know that when the stock craters, you'll actually start getting excited because you know that you're actually buying $1 for 50 cents. But if you haven't done the work, then when that stock plummets because of, you know, A, B, C reasons, you won't know where that company will be in a year's time. You know, it's, it's like going scuba diving. You always check your equipment. You check the ocean conditions. You make sure you go out with a buddy. You don't just grab your regulator and just wing it at 10 p.m. at night by yourself and just hope for the best. Overall, the more checks you do with your companies, the better off you'll be at making smart decisions when the sky is falling. And then secondly, Lynch also touches on the idea of maintaining a long-term investing outlook. You know, if the stock market crashes and you're expecting to make, you know, 10% this month, maybe to help cover your rent payments, whew, good luck, you will definitely lose money. But if your goal is to say, come out ahead in, in 10 years time, then all of a sudden, stock market crashes are not scary at all. They're just like, they're Black Friday sales, but in the stock market. You find the right businesses, buy them up when the stock market is depressed, and then you wait. You just wait, that's all you have to do. You wait for the market to eventually correct itself over the next year, two, three years, and then you've made money. Look, even in the GFC, it only took five and a half years to get back to where you were at the previous top. And if you held on for 10 years, well, you've made a lot of money. So don't get, you know, you have to understand it and say, they're doing well, and as long as they keep doing well, my best stocks have been my fifth, sixth, seventh year I own them, not my fifth, sixth, seventh day. So you have to understand that and uh, stay with it. You only need to buy a few stocks every decade. When your lifetime's over, you don't need a lot of five baggers to make a lot of money starting with $10,000 or $5,000. You could have bought Walmart 10 years after it went public and made 35 times your money. If you bought it when they went public, you would have made 500 times your money, but you could have waited 10 years after Walmart went public and made uh, 30, over 30 times your money. You could have waited three years after Microsoft went public and made 10 times your money. So find the great companies and stick with them. Then if the market does crash, you know, run over your valuation and you'll probably find you have an amazing long-term opportunity to buy the business very cheap. You know, as Buffett says, we buy $1 bills for 50 cents. That's our goal. And the other thing Peter touches on in that clip is how you only need a few killer stocks in your lifetime. You know, normally it's extremely hard to find these kinds of opportunities. Uh, but the crazy thing about a market crash is that these infrequent buying opportunities, 
they actually start popping up everywhere. You know, in big market crashes like the GFC, basically your entire watch list will become so cheap that all the stocks represent big multi-bagger opportunities. So knowing that you only need a few big stocks in your lifetime and these opportunities normally come very infrequently, Hopefully that changes your mindset in the depths of a big market crash. Turn that feeling of fear into a feeling of opportunity. You know, this is rare and I'm going to grab it with both hands. Then lastly, I also just wanted to play one final clip from Peter about a very desirable characteristic of a company, particularly during a recession or a market crash. Is a lot of times people buy on the basis the stock has gone down this much uh, you know, how much further can you go down? I did the same thing in my, uh, I think my first or second year of Fidelity. Kaiser Industries had gone from $26 this year to 16. I said, how much lower can it go? It's 16. So I think we bought one of the biggest blocks ever on the New York, on the American Stock Exchange of Kaiser Industries at 14. I said, you know, it's gone from 26 to 16. How much lower can it go? Well, at 10, I called my mother and said, mom, you got to uh, look at this Kaiser Industries. I mean, how much lower can it go? It's gone from 26 to 10. <laughs> Well, it went to six, it went to five, it went to four, it went to three. And at three, I figured out, you know, there's something very wrong here because Kaiser Industries owns 40% of Kaiser Steel, they own 40% of Kaiser Aluminum, they own 32% of Kaiser Cement, they own Kaiser Broadcasting, they own Kaiser Santa Gravel, Kaiser Engineers, they own Jeep, they own business after business, and they had no debt. Now, I learned this very early, this might be a breakthrough for some people. It's very hard to go bankrupt if you don't have any debt. It's, it's tricky, some people can approach that, it's a, real, it's a real achievement. But they had no debt, and the whole company at three was selling at about 75 million. At that point, it was equal to buying one Boeing 747. I said, there's something wrong with this company selling for 75 million. I was a little premature at 16, but uh, I said, everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser's Mint. They passed out shares in Kaiser Lunum. They passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel. They sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. And, but if you didn't understand the company, if you're just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16, and then it got to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have, is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it. Then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. Do you flip a coin? Do you walk around the block? You know, what do you do? He's absolutely right. Most people don't know what to do when the stock goes down because they don't know enough about the company. But what was interesting about his story about um, Kaiser Industries is he knew the business was fine because it had no debt. If the cash flows stay decent enough to cover the expenses and the business has no debt, then it's practically impossible for that company to go bust. <laughs> so another tip in recessions, scary times, market crashes, is just to make sure that your companies have debt levels under control. You know, for example, Facebook has no debt. Google has, I think, $14 billion in debt, but it has $142 billion worth of cash or short-term marketable securities. They're just not going bankrupt. And if they aren't going bankrupt, if nothing can force them into bankruptcy, then it's only a matter of time before the market crash or the storm is over and things just go back to the way they were. So there's another reassuring factor. You know, in the depths of a recession, if your company has no debt, you have that added layer of security about the future of the business. But anyway, guys, that will just about do us for today. They are Peter Lynch's tips as to not, not only surviving, but thriving from market crashes. Uh, I really like listening to Peter talk because he's just so damn rational. <laughs> he just knows exactly what to say. Uh, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into kind of the mindset and the tips and tricks how you can actually end up profiting quite substantially from stock market crashes. They are, you know, if, if maybe you haven't been through a big one before, they are quite scary, uh, particularly for new investors. But really, when, when you take the time to understand this long-term investing temperament, they represent the best opportunities you will ever get in the stock market. Long-term, stock market crashes are your friend. <laughs> 
So anyway guys, that'll just about do us for this video. Leave a like on it if you did enjoy it or if you found it useful. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. If you are interested in how I go about my investing, my active investing strategy, and you just wanted an eight hour step-by-step -step course on how to implement the Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch style value investing strategy, then you can check out Profitful Introduction to Stock Analysis. That'll be left down in the description below. Uh, but guys, that will just about do us. Thanks always to the Patreon uh, supporters for you know supporting the channel and making these videos possible. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again to ShareSite for sponsoring this video. Uh, so recently I finally decided to stop being lazy and I imported all of my stock portfolios across into ShareSite. Finally, I should have done that a hell of a lot sooner. So with ShareSite, you sign up, you link your ShareSite account with your stockbroker or you just add your positions manually. And then from there, ShareSite tracks everything for you. It tracks your capital gains, it tracks your dividends, it'll track your dividend reinvestment plans, it'll track gains and losses from currency fluctuations. Seriously, this is by far the most thorough portfolio tracker I have ever seen. And because they track and record everything so thoroughly, they can provide you with all of these reports. So from literally simple performance reports to complex predicted future cash flow reports if you're a dividend investor. But here's the really good thing, they also provide all of these detailed reports for tax time. So send these reports to your accountant, done. You know, plug these numbers into your tax return, done. Simple as that, it's a big, big help. And most of these features are available for free, but to be honest, to get the best experience, I would personally bite the bullet and upgrade to a paid plan. Honestly, this is one of the few stock market related subscriptions that I would actually recommend. It's very, very helpful, particularly when it comes to tax time. Anyway, if you did want to sign up, simply use the referral link in the description or you can go to sharesite.com forward slash new money and ShareSite will give you a special offer of four months free when you sign up to an annual plan. So at least sign up for the free plan. It will make your life easier. But uh, that's it for today, guys. Thanks very much to ShareSite for sponsoring this content and I'll see you guys next time.